Coming up this week on Beyond the Vibe, we chat with Tom Hollister of Cardinal Black. We kind of laugh at the fact that it's like the, the newest band that's been around forever a little bit. This band's, I guess, been 10, 10, 11, 12 even years in the making. You're about to go on tour with Miles Kennedy uh, yeah. next month, which is like just incredible, really. Yeah, it's... Um Firstly, it's really exciting, and we we honestly can't wait to do it. And it's and it's been a little bit of a thing, you know, which I think going back to the childhood kind of how do you get into music? I, like it's going to be a little milestone, right? And then all of a sudden, there's a phone call, and it's Alan Niven in the states saying, you know, I've, I've, he, he talked about us in a magazine, basically, specifically about Chris, right? I mean, Alan Niven's getting back into it, and you know, Guns N' Roses, etc. And I remember we're on the sofa, we have the phone call, come to LA, you know, do all this kind of, come to Arizona rather. And, um, you know, we were like, Jesus, we're going to be millionaires by the end of the week, you know, and it's like (laughs) all of that kind of cliche stuff. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Vibe, the issue that cuts deep into the world of music. My name is Aaron Day, lead guitarist of UK band These Wicked Rivers, and I'm here with music videographer and photographer it's Mr Ryan Vasey it is isn't it it's yes it is yeah (laughs) (laughs) it is me Uh, who else could it be be? you know this week we've got an interesting one haven't we Yes, very interesting. Um, so I, I heard of his, this band uh, through his guitarist, Chris Book, um, but from speaking to him, I, it was really cool to find out his own story and kind of the origins of the band. He's, of course, Tom, the singer of Cardinal Black. Yes, um, obviously they're, they're about to uh, embark on the tour with Miles Kennedy. Oh, such a good tour. I know, right? It's a really good tour. Yes, I mean, that's kind of like the... I mean, they've only been going for about a year. Obviously, they've got, you know, the band themselves of, um, I think it was the three of them have, have already got roots as a trio um, from back in the day. So they're kind of building on that. Obviously, Chris is very well known in the industry. I mean, as we chat about in the interview, I mean, I'd love to tour with Miles Kennedy. I'm a big Miles Kennedy fan. Um, love his most recent solo album. Love the vibe he's gone for. I think Miles is becoming, would you say he's one of the modern, iconic, legendary frontmen? Yeah, I think, like, he's the that guy now that everybody looks to you know like like um you know in the past you've had the lights of you know axel rose and um, your robert plants and that and i think i think of this era miles kennedy is now that kind of guy that people look at as you know he's the big vocalist guy that everybody looks to as you know that that one at the top level um so you know to get to get a support slot with a with a guy of that kind of esteem is is uh, is a really impressive thing, and um, you know you can hear all about that now. So we're here with Tom Hollister, Cardinal Black. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Where are you guys? Cheers, thanks, thanks for having me, and uh, glad I could be here. No, absolute pleasure to have you here. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, one thing that we like to do on the show is uh, we like to go back to the origins of a musician. Um, so with that in mind, when was the first time you remember hearing music and thinking like, this is what I want to do? Like, did you have a moment? I guess, yeah, not really. I, not not a dead on moment, but I guess um, I was exposed to it from a very early age. Like my my grandfather was a very good pianist, and then my brother kind of took up the mantle and and was and was very very good. And I kind of so I was around it a lot, but that was kind of classical music more than anything. I guess my love for uh, just like realistically any kind of black music i love so any kind of blues and gospel and soul and um and i guess my my love for that came from just my dad's love of music and the the records he was putting on i remember he had this old kind of sony record player and and ironically i'm about to name a couple of non-black artists but um you know it was john martin very early on and it was um paul simon and and James Taylor and I kind of like stuff like that and always have and never really unfortunately went through that kind of teenage angst phase it was just I was always the most boring teenager in the world loving you know <laughs> Paul Simon a very you know 13 year old but um but it was about 13 that I played my first ever gig so I guess that I had the you know the the, the chops to try and get into it then early on but um yeah I can't really put a put a time where I if you heard something and went well that's amazing I know I want to do that for a living you know <laughs> I, I mean, still don't know whether I do I mean, v- vocally, it's something where I can imagine like that sort of thing. It grabs you straight away because of the amount of soul and the amount of character that goes into it. I mean, it's also quite a bit of a 
you know, you're setting your, your standards pretty high early on, you know, in terms of vocally going into bands and, and getting into bands, was, was it that you did what most people did around 13, 14, where you were going into rock bands and trying to bring that more blue, blue soul element into there? Or did you always have a particular sound and style of bands that you wanted to be in? Because we all go through them periods, don't we? Of, of finding yeah, our I think so. I think it was never, firstly, it's, they've always been kind of, not my, but not you know, none of the bands are my bands. It's always been an equal part, but they've always been bands that I've set up. So I've never really yeah. gone into another band, um, you know, and and kind of auditioned or said, you know, I, you need a singer, I'll, I'll sing. Um, I play various instruments very badly, but enough to kind of write on. But I remember, like first band. I started playing the bass because we didn't know we didn't know what a bass was. I think it was like the phonics, I guess, back in the day. Um, and it was like, well, what's this bigger guitar with four strings? Let's have a go at that. And then we couldn't really get anybody to do it. And I, so I did that. So for a long time, you know, including when we when I started to have some small semblance of kind of success with a band, which was essentially the band now Cardinal Black, but without Sam on bass. Mm. We were kind of a power trio, like a blues trio, and I played bass. Um, and if you ever heard any of that, you'd understand exactly why we got a bass player in. But because um, <laughs> that is not my forte. But in terms of singing, yeah, like I've never, I've never gone into any band and, and thought I need to sing this way for this style to come out. It's just, I've always had that kind of, I think that kind of mid Atlantic thing and mm. massively influenced a lot by American artists, much more than British, I think. And yeah. although they're, you know, they're very good British artists. So it was just kind of opened my mouth and that's what happened, I guess. And, and kind of thought, well, I'll keep going with that until people, boom me off <laughs> well, that's good man it shows you've got your own character and i think that's a positive thing as you said now obviously doing your doing your thing with cardinal black uh, so the band is in its current situation firmed in 2020 um obviously not a lot of time has passed since then was there a moment between when you all got all you guys came together to to kind of you know start the new journey with cardinal black and where you are now whether it be a practice or writing a certain song or a gig where you thought oh this is we made the right decision here this is this is good yeah, I think we we kind of laugh at the fact that it's like the the newest band that's been around forever a little bit, and you know the the key band members, myself and Chris on guitar, and then Adam on drums. We were we this band's I guess been 10, 10, 11, 12 even years in the making, and we were knocking around as the trio that I spoke about earlier, and and kind of went out and did some work in the states for that band, and then as all bands, you know, usually of, of young kind of kids that we were at the time that kind of broke up um, two, three years into it. But we stayed together and played in kind of, you know, the same, like a covers band and a wedding band. And, and I think, you know, without really saying it, we all kind of thought there was some material that was, that was our news there and they were kind of, um, and that probably deserves to, you know, be listened to and, and we were 10 years better, I think, and 10 years wiser. And um, and that adds its own kind of benefit, I think, in terms of not being too wet behind the, he behind the ears. And, and um, yeah, so it, it was kind of the nucleus was there ages ago. And then we just thought, actually, let's have a go. And, and COVID, you know, not to capitalise on what was you know, terrible for a lot of people, but COVID kind of allowed us the time to do it kind of under the guise of just kind of locked down a little bit and... Mm. Um, and not have any of the pressure and, and you guys right I, I guess are aware of Chris and, and the kind of baggage that would come around um, Chris having a little bit of a name for himself now and and so what what he was very conscious of is like you know I don't want to I don't want to say and in you know fall 2021 there's going to be a record you know we didn't want any of that pressure because we just didn't know it was going to be shit and so we just thought like we'll <laughs> we'll have a go and and very quickly got Sam on board um and Sam's been a great addition, and 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 it's just kind of snowball from there. We we did. I mean, the only thing we knew we wanted to do was was we thought we were a little bit kind of older now and a bit wiser, and we had a bit more about us, I guess, in terms of knowing the industry a little bit more. And so the thing we we knew we wanted to do was was kind of hit on day one with, you know, the semblance of a record, albeit an EP. Um, a little bit of merch available, full, fully formed website, you know, every, everything kind of, you mm. know, we're a band and we rather than this kind of like coming soon, you know, like every young band would do and be like, you know, keep the eyes peeled because there's going to be this amazing thing coming around the corner and then it usually never happens. But so we thought, well, we'll just hit. We we, we were even in an iron about doing an album, of, you know, first off. And, and that's kind of, I guess, 
um, testament to the fact that we had quite a lot of material from back in the day, albeit quite a lot of new stuff as well. And but then we thought, well, let's chill and release an EP. Like nobody might might want to hear it, and then um, it also gives us a chance to do a little bit of album writing further down the line, I guess. So yeah. Mm. Of course, um, the the debut single um, "Tell Me How It Feels" came out back in May, um, which, of course, in less than just twenty four hours, uh, the track toppled Noel Gallagher at number one uh, in the iTunes rock charts. And uh, just two months later, if that wasn't enough, uh, less than twelve hours, uh, your debut EP took uh, the number one spot on iTunes and uh, Amazon Rock bestsellers chart as well. What was that time for you guys like and like the overall feeling around the band? I mean, you spoke there about saying, oh, we might have done an album. We might have just put out an EP or something. I mean, did it, did it kind of surpass your expectations? Yeah, it definitely did for me personally, because I mean, it was, you know, I've done a little bit outside of, you know, it, uh, kind of inside and outside the industry. And I tour managed a little bit and I've done a little bit of work with other people and I was singing a bit of session vocals and all this kind of stuff. And, but I'd never really put anything of my own out for 10 years. And so it's very easily, I'm a pretty big confident bloke, but it pretty, pretty easily gets on top of you that you actually might not be very good at it and you might not, you know, we all get it, right? You're in a room, you can play, you can sing a bit. I understand that, but it's, you know, is there a want for the music you put out? Is the time right? Is it edgy enough? Is it whatever? And, and we've also just like, I'd never written to a brief. I never wanted to do that. So I just thought, well, stick true to what you like and put it out and see. So yeah, I honestly, I mean, all of the, it, it's, it's almost laughable. I mean, the Noel Gallagher stuff is, I, it's lovely, but it's, you know, it's bullshit, isn't it? I mean, it's like, it's <laughs> my, I remember my dad, we were up in the studio, we, we were doing a little bit of like a live EP thing that, um, that may or may not come out at some point, but we, um, and it was the day that this, this happened and we were taking breaks and coming out and, you know, it was, it was at number 60. Oh, amazing. You know, and then it was a number 40 and then it was a, all of a sudden it was number one. And of course you make, you make hay out of it a little bit. And I remember my father ringing me and saying, you know, cause he's used to like old school chart systems where mm -hmm. if you had a number one, he's I'm paying his mortgage. Right. So he's like, Christ, that's it then. Is it, you know? And I'm like, no, I don't think it works like that. mate. you know, it's, um, he'd, he'd already booked the holiday. He's, he's yeah, bought, yeah, he's he's bought the car. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? He, he was gone. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he thought it was that kind of old school system of, of, you know, you've kind of made it if you ever had number one. And, um, and of course it isn't really, you know, it's a great achievement, but mm. yeah, I hate to say it and spoiler alert, but if you look for about the two weeks before and about the four months after Noel Gallagher was back at the top again, <laughs> you know, so, um, but it was lovely to say that you kind of picked him at the post for, for a couple of days there, I think. And, um, and, and yeah, to do it again in the EP was, was great. And I think, you know, we're, we're all very grounded. I like to think anyway, we're all very grounded people. And those kind of, those kind of achievements are, are such, but also if anything, they're just the want to continue to, to do more. And, and, you know, I, and I'm not just blowing smoke, but this means more to me that you guys would have taken the time to ask the question of whether we could have a chat, you know, that means more than, than whether or not we pip Noel Galling at the top of a chart for 24 hours. Do you know what I mean? As nice as it, I'm sure it was. <laughs> we appreciate that, Tom. And we, we've all, we think we're bigger than the Noel Gallagher, don't we? It's, you've you've been saying it for a while, haven't you? So it's, I think yeah. I think a lot of it, Tom, is like you say, is that just that validation, really, that people are vibing on what you're trying to do. Like you say, well, before you you do it, there's that bit of trepidation where it's like, you know, oh, I hope people don't think it's you know it's shit, you know. And I, we, every band has the same thing before they bring something out. It's just nice to have that gr fantastic response and that people are vibing on what you're trying to do. Yeah, uh, thank you, and I and I I think that's true, and and long may it continue. But I I also think you know it's it was kind of mixed for us because as much as it was great to release stuff, obviously under the guise of lockdown rules and things, we knew the thing we couldn't do was go and play live, and yeah. um, and that was a killer for what is mainly. I mean, you know, you, you do see a lot of. I'm not knocking this for a second, and you know, each to their own, and but there's obviously a lot of music that can kind of fully produced and written and. And, and release from from a bedroom or from a studio, and you know I I work closely with bands that that really don't gig. You know that's an afterthought. And but but for us, and I know a lot of other bands that stem from that kind of you know analog sound of of four or five people on a stage. It's that's everything. So it was a mixed bag because the, the moment that happens, the next thing you want to do is keep that snowball rolling by getting on a stage, right? So, so it's been great to be able to do that a little bit now and hopefully it'll, things will open up and continue to get better. But um, but yeah, it, it was a little bit like, 
it was a bit wrong. It was a little bit like, I remember yeah. the day where you'd release, a, you know, you'd release a record and people would be like, this is great. And we'd come and see you tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? And it's, and then we were like, okay, well that's great. We can't do anything for a couple of months, you know? So, um, so yeah, no, it, it, but it was great. It was great. Mate. We really enjoyed it. I'm sure I got very, very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had something similar with me and the boys in the, um, these Wicked Rivers where we brought out a debut album in the first lockdown. And I, I was really resonating with what you're saying there, man, because it's like, you feel like you should be doing something. Yeah. Like you feel, you're just sitting at home thinking, surely there's something that something needs to happen now, you know, because it's just an, an yeah. immediate reaction that you want to go out and celebrate it with the fans and, and play it live. So yeah, I, I, I felt that feeling as well. It's, it's yeah. Sure. I, I, I think everybody did. I don't think, you know, it was, it was, I think it was, it was almost like that additional weirdness of we weren't already an established band. So it wasn't like, are oh, you kind of done? Like when we did the Cardiff Castle thing with, um, with those damn crows, mm. uh, we kind of, we've been, we kind of watch you know, what they've been doing and the crow cast and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, they've worked hard to keep that family of fans together, but also they had a fan base to start with. We were mm. lucky in one way that nobody had a clue we were, hence the no pressure thing. But then when we, we launched, it was almost this fake launch. It was almost this band that, you know, the, the reason why we did the video we did for Tell Me How It Feels was we wanted it to try and be as live as possible without obviously it being live. So we mm. did this kind of, we're trying to, you know, it was all cut in one video take and it was against the big wall. And, um, and hopefully that kind of resonated, but yeah, no, it, it, I imagine mate, the same for you, right? It's, it's, you, that's the thing you want to do, you know, mm. recording and marketing and doing all of the hard work behind it. It's the work, but actually you don't get into it as a kid to do that. You want to get yeah. into it to play life. Right. So yeah. So hopefully we get to do more of that. No, that's it, man. No, as you said, during lockdown, you had a bit of time, obviously, whilst doing the roots of the band to really decide how you wanted to put it out there. And you spoke about it a little bit, obviously, back in 2010, you know, live set at Sonosphere, followed a phone call, uh, a manager of Guns N' Roses, and that kind of progressed into that first stage of, of where you are now. Um, was there anything you took from that first experience when you were setting the foundations for this next, for Cardinal Black? Was there anything in particular which inspired you or you thought, I want to do this different? You know, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but I'd like to kind of expand it with you. <laughs> Yeah, good question and well researched. Um, <laughs> it that was a funny time because you know we were young, and and it was one of those moments, especially kind of coming from where we come from, up the little town in the valleys, and and you know there was a lot of pressure, and I think Chris probably had that pressure more than anybody because a he was the youngest, still remains to be. That's apparently how time works, but um, <laughs> but more that. He, that the the plaudits were directly aimed at Chris for a lot of it and continue to be so and rightly so. I mean the boy could play, right? Like I'm not that that's absolutely justified. But um and I think the trouble was a little bit with that was well, I mean the great thing was that we were sat I remember one day we're sat and it's like we're in Steve Winwood's private studio and doing stuff with his producer and um it was an amazing place out in the Cotswolds and then all of a sudden there's a phone call and it's Alan Niven in the States saying you know, I've, I've, he, he talked about us in a magazine, basically, specifically about Chris. And, um, and yeah, I remember Chris was, Chris was basically going to get invited to go to the States to basically try and um, kind of branch out with what he was doing. But again, he was quite young. And, um, and then we started writing together and kind of organically found each other. And um, Alan said, look, just stay, you know, that it, it's, it makes more sense for you guys to stay and write and, and see if, something will happen there and, and thankfully it did and then he was getting a lot of phone calls saying because I don't think he'd done a great deal in the industry after you know the, the heydays of well multiple bands actually as well as obviously Guns N' Roses but um, and then I think he kind of gone away from it for a little bit for personal reasons and then kind of dived back into it with us so that wasn't enough of a buzz more of a buzz than us right I mean Alan Niven's getting back into it and you know Guns N' Roses etc and I remember we're on the sofa we have the phone call come to LA you know do all this kind of come to Arizona rather and um, you know we were like Jesus we're going to be millionaires by the end of the week you know and it's like you know, all of that kind of cliched stuff and and of course that doesn't happen and you know that that was never I mean none of that was an issue Christ but um, but it, it just burned very bright. And I think, you know, it's hard at that age, especially if you don't have a really good kind of setup around you. I think it's very hard at that, that age to ride that wave in a, in a reasoned way that allows you to then build on that. Um, because everybody wants to go not to, you know, a hundred overnight and, 
And it's, so it's just super exciting. But then when it inevitably kind of broke down fairly amicably and clearly, you know, it's worked out for the best really. But um, yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. I think for me to, to, you know what, it was tough for me to come away from that and then not have, not have like 10 phone calls, come and be the singer in my band. Do you know what I mean? Which mm. didn't come, you know? And, um, and so I thought, well, okay, well, that's probably my chance done, you know, as you do when you're, especially when you're that young and you're like, well, okay, that's that then. And, and I continue to write, you know, I sit at a piano, I sit at a guitar and I always write my phone's full of voice memos and whatnot, but it was truthfully, you know, it was always about Adam and Chris. It was always about, that's what I loved. You know, I wanted to write music with those two boys. And so, yeah, it was hard to see, you know, kind of Chris go off, I think, and make his own way. And it wasn't me and him, do you know what I mean? And that was always the kind of partnership. And, um, but as I say, it's kind of worked out for the best. And, and it stood me, it stood all of us, I think, in real good stead for, for the, you know, the trials and tribulations that you get with the industry, you know, but yeah, but, yeah, it was, it was good, but it was, <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. a test in time, no doubt, mm. especially for my girlfriend. <laughs> it always is <laughs> um, of course uh, on the brighter side of things though uh, when it comes to gigging you're about to go on tour with Miles Kennedy uh, yeah. next month which is like just incredible really um, when it comes to, to doing that and um, you go out in front of a big crowd is there any is there any songs in particular that you're looking forward to playing like you know these, these are I mean I presume these will be arenas and, and large places like that <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, <laughs> truth be told, I mean, like, sorry, I, I don't want it to be the fucking dire hour with Tom Hollister, by the way. I know that my last answer wasn't the happiest. Um, so, yeah, not the good times. Um, yeah, it's, um, first, it's really exciting, and we, we honestly can't wait to do it. And it's And it's been a little bit of a thing, you know, which I think, going back to the childhood, kind of, how do you get into music, I, like... It's going to be a little milestone, right? Do a little O2 tour of the UK. Like, that's great. Living out the back of a van and all that kind of exciting stuff, and which we've all done a little bit of, but, you know, it's cool to do it in the band. You want to do it and work hard to get it. Um, in, terms of, in terms of songs, the irony is we've only done, but yeah, I, I think we've done two, two gigs. So we're gonna play. We're gonna play every song, <laughs> and they'll like it or they'll hate it, but they'll have to have it. You know, um, there's there's clearly so it's, it is a strange one because I think judging by what he's done so far, um, the Ides of March, you know, his solo stuff that mm. he's doing is obviously a little different than the Bridge stuff. But and it seems as though you know there's a little bit of broken down stuff, and it's a little bit more kind of closer knit with the audiences. I think the venues in the States actually were a little smaller than the venues that he's doing in, in the UK. Right. And and yeah, rightly so. So it's like Shepherd's Bush Empire and there's Manchester O2, you know, which I guess three three plus thousand caps. So they they're big venues, but um but equally, I don't think it's about just go out and play the most powerful, loud songs. I think we can get away with break, you know breaking down and mm. you know a lot of our live stuff. If you haven't heard any of it, how the hell would you have? But um, is is kind of like bigger stuff, keys. There's mul you know multiple harm harmonies in the vocals. Um, so we like to think we sound like the Eagles, but actually, I don't think we do. But um, it'd be great if we were anywhere near that. But um, so yeah, I, but I think. We, you're you're able to allow the music to breathe. It doesn't just have to be hit them in the face with everything rock, yeah. you know, which I think if, if I was 10 years younger, I would be like, well, it was the same in Cardiff Castle, right? So like those damn crows headline, much heavier than us. It's much more kind of upbeat stuff, I guess. And it's great. They're really good at what they do. I think 10 years ago, I'd have gone, okay, how do we play everything 10 BPM quicker and harder and faster? And now I'm like, actually, I mean, we were lucky enough that they invite us personally to be on the bill, which is really sweet of them. And they've done that because hopefully they've heard our music and they like what we do, right? Mm. So it's like stick to what you've done and you've written and and hopefully people there'll be an audience for it. So yeah, we'll we'll kind of I I don't know the absolute set at the moment, but I think we're gonna we're not gonna shy away from doing, you know, a slower number, you know, and, mm. and um and why not? No, we said before, and didn't we? I think because of like you, you touched on there, Tom, because Miles Kennedy's new album does have a, quite a lot of different shades in it. I think it provides yeah. the perfect platform for you boys to to be yourselves and not have to have too much sort of insecurity about it. It feels like it's the the perfect sort of opening tour, you know, like for you guys to go out there and, and spread your wings, man. Yeah, I mean, if, we're extremely lucky with it, and we're so grateful for, to Miles for it. Uh, you know, it's it's come about off off the back of of. Um, of Chris and he played with Miles on stage with Slash about 
I guess maybe eight, nine years ago, something like that. In I can't remember really the NEC. I want to say something like that in Birmingham, I believe. And you know, big old crowd and big moment for Chris. And and it was after Guns N' Roses. And it was the band that Miles was seeing with Slash with. I know he's just released some new stuff as well. And um, and they stayed in touch since. And Miles just seemed like cool. a genuinely lovely bloke. And um, and he just dropped in a message saying, look here's my new band and we know you're coming to the UK and if you haven't already got a tour support, you fancy it, we'd love to do it. And I, re- I remember he just didn't get back to the message for a while. I hope he, if, if everybody ever hears this, then I hope you don't mind me saying, but, and Chris kind of thought, no hard feelings, but he thought, oh, okay, well, you know, pipe dream, whatever. And then he come back saying, you know, um, look, I'm so sorry. I, I missed the message. You know, it's great coming from you because Chris was praising the record and, um, sounds like it could be a lot of fun and let me see what we can do. Cause he, I guess even at that level, right. There's, there's a lot of hopes you have to jump through and it's not just one guy's decision. Yeah, and, yeah. um, and we were lucky enough that we kind of, they came back and said, yeah, why not? And yeah. So it's again, like a lot of this, it's me holding as tightly as I can onto the coattails of Chris back <laughs> to see how, to see how high you'll take me. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it should be amazing fun, mate. And you know, it's, um, I just can't wait. I honestly can't wait. We're, we're really pumped about it. I can't wait to go to rehearsal tonight and just try and etch out the um, the set and, and get in a good condition for it. And yeah, you know, it, what a fantastic opportunity. And and also, I guess over the, whatever it is, 10 dates, it's going to be an accumulative 30,000 people or whatever. And it's just a real, real lovely opportunity to, for us to raise our profile. And, and, and I think crucially as well, I think a lot of his audience will, will be kind of, you know, fans I guess of the slightly heavier stuff and so probably won't be people that are that familiar with us you know and um, and so we, we might we might garner a few new kind of yeah, converts man. I guess yeah, yeah that's, that's killer I think that's going to be the nicest blokes in the world on that tour because Miles Kennedy's a nice but I mean Tom's the nicest geezer I think we've ever had on the vibe <laughs> Chris comes across as a nice geek. It's just going to be lovely, isn't it? Everyone's going to be lovely. I'm killing kittens under the desk as we speak. Yeah. Apart from that, so yeah, right, yeah. We'll, we'll put a gate on it so the, their screams can't be heard. It. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, worry yeah. about it. Um, obviously, like I've, the biggest thing I get from you, Tom is there's just the positivity and the energy and the excitement, man, about getting to play with these guys again and getting to write and the tour. Obviously, you kind of you've released the debut EP. Can can fans af- expect after this tour? You know, maybe an album coming up at some point. Have you got the material for it now? Are we allowed to ask? <laughs> You're allowed to ask. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, th- honestly, I mean, it's so like yes is the answer. So, but but only in as much as we will have obviously want to bring an album out at some point. Right now, we're in the kind of movement of trying to sort some li- more live stuff out for next year. Um, but it's hard for various reasons. The main one being that you know I don't know where the other bands are seeing this as well. But we were thinking of maybe, you know, kind of the, the old school 28 days in a van doing every city in the UK. And although we're trying to maybe do those same cities, we'll probably break it down into smaller sections geographically and, and time-wise so that if anybody gets the inev- inevitable positive test at the moment, we don't have to ruin 10 people in a day's gig. So, um, and maybe it's only three or four. So, um, and there are other positives to that, right? Which it, it frees up other time in between those to, to continue to write and continue to record. Um yeah, I mean, we would love to do it. We, we've got enough material probably right now, but I'm a little bit of a bugger for, for you know, wanting to kind of throw a lot of that out and, and really hone the, the good stuff. And mm. again, you know, 10, 10 years ago, I would have said, well, we've got, you know, we've got 12 tracks as an album, right? And now I want to be like, we've got 24 tracks. We're nearly there for an album. And, you know, we'll whittle that down <laughs> to 12, you know? And, and, and so I think, but also I love writing in, 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 in a live setting, in the room with the boys, you know, we all, we all um, kind of pay into that part and, and write. So there's, no, there's nothing better actually than just getting on the road and gigging because I think that just breeds that creativity as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, you'll definitely, there will definitely be an album unless we split up again, you know, um, <laughs> and we're all at each other's throats within six months. But no, we'll, we'll, I'm pretty sure we're pretty confident there'll be an album when I can't tell you. Um, mm-hmm. but, um, but hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Christmas out of the way. Yeah, I think it's a good thing to do that, like to, you know, not just have 10 songs and go, yeah, we've got enough for an album, um, you know, to to refine what you're doing, you know, like having that full list, you know, you want you want too much, really, don't you, rather than too little. You have that stamp of quality there. Mm. 
Yeah, sorry, man. I, I missed what you said then. Yeah, that's all right. I, was, I think I know I agree completely with what Ryan was saying. I think then you can really, particularly because what you've brought out so far has been such good quality and such a great reaction. You know, the tours like the perfect stepping stone you just want that next step to be a continuous you know burst of momentum and the more songs and the more time you spend with it the better that next step can be yeah i i agree completely and i think it's just also testament and reflective of the the hard work that all of us put in and it, not just the boys in the band but we've got a, a great small team behind us as well mm. and all you know we have this kind of ethos I guess that people only get to come into our circle if they're going to add value to that circle and add value to the band and so we keep our we keep the people that come in quite tight um, you know because of the career that Chris has led out for himself because of the way that I am and I've done a little bit of management with other artists as well that that we don't need micromanagement and we we just need someone to kind of really ha hands on the wheel and, and kind of steer, steer the ship a little bit at crucial times and we definitely have that in the in the guys that work with us um but yeah it's with with, with everything else we we plan hard and we work hard and we understand that writing recording and playing music is only a relatively actual small part of what it takes to be a professional musician and, and a professional band and and someone that crucially can show progress and 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 gain support year and year out and um so and that feeds back into the writing as well yeah like i i'm very quick at writing so I, you know i'll sometimes go shit i haven't written anything for a while and we got a rehearsal and we got to feed the beast a little bit and so i might get like a bit of a top by melody and some chords down and have the semblance of a song within you know 10 minutes perhaps and then often go we try and work on it it doesn't sit right immediately and then a year goes by and we don't touch it and and then all of a sudden it's like oh actually yeah, there's a middle eight that I need to nick from somewhere to really finish this off and it comes from the song that I wrote a year ago and um, it, it, you know it's taken us a long time to even get to the point where we released this record so that as in and started the band rather and and so we're definitely not going to rush the next bit and I think as you guys will probably know too you get the feeling when it's your own stuff that like especially now in the age of social media, that if you're not releasing something every month, it's like, well, everybody's going to fucking walk away and leave us and hate us because <laughs> yes. we're now not releasing anything. I think, it, you know, we've got a really great manager, frankly, who's been around for a long time and done much better stuff than, than us, but um, who, who kind of comes from an angle of saying, but the guys that like you also follow 20 other bands and you just chill and don't worry about it and you do it at the right time. And, and yeah, it's so sweet of you to say, but it, it is a place of positivity and it is a place of, we want it to be work for us, you know, all of us and full time and whatever, which is not quite for us actually right now. And, um, but we, we'll get that through wanting to work hard. Like I want, I want 10 hours of this a day, right? I, you know, I don't want it to just be, you know, I think it was, I think it was George Clooney, the one said about like what he does in, in his career. He's like, you know, I produce and I write and I act and all of these things. And the only bit that feels like work is the bit where I walk down the red carpet. So it's that little bit of like the bit that I love doing is, is the craft and is the working hard and, the, you know, in our case, gigging and writing and recording. I love all of that, you know, so I, I don't want to rush it. And um, yeah. And, and, and at the moment, because we're doing it the way we do it, we don't really have anybody at the end of the phone saying you need to rush it, you know? So, but equally, we don't want to keep people waiting too long. We have got a, fair amount of gear so we'll, we'll have something out soon i'm sure <laughs> yeah um now we're at that point in the show where we like to throw some strange questions at artists um so hypothetically for uh, cardinal black's next release uh you've got a gun to your head you have to do another genre what would that genre be oh. you have the power you, you can make the decisions <laughs> yeah that's a good question um it also sounds like a rehearsal in the valleys. Most uh, most weeks, gun to my head, <laughs> whiskey in my hand. Um, I, don't, I you know, I've got a real soft spot, weirdly, for for country, but not but not like not like my you know my cat's on fire and my house just you know got burgled country, but like 
one of my favorite like, songs from the country. yeah 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 i know i but i love again i think it goes back to that kind of southern drawl kind of like i guess it's all still kind of rootsy bluesy stuff but yeah maybe that that's a bullshit answer right because it's not it's not too far away from what we already do <laughs> all right um a musical we're gonna write a musical right nice yeah i like the fact you saw where we were going to come in and and have a go at you and you went completely the other way and yeah, made yeah, sure yeah. that we didn't blow your head off and you went musical i do a musical all right yeah and I, for the most part, hate musicals. So that is a, you know, a big, bigger side. Yeah, we'll look forward to that, won't we? I, know, I mean, it's the next progression for Cardinal Black, isn't it? So yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. album as well. So you can really knuckle down now and focus on that for, for the exactly. for the debut album. <laughs> Awesome. And one of the questions we tend to ask Tom, it's a, and I kind of get the vibe that, that you'll probably answer with just because you, you, of the point you're at in your career and kind of the positivity around the band. Um, do you have any personal targets for where you'd like the band to be in 10 years' time? You know, do you have a certain, you know, some people want to play Download, some people want to play Glastonbury. Is there anything for you in particular? Well, between me and Chris, we've done both of those things. I'll have you know. Um, oh, very good. But there we go. Uh, but not with this band, so maybe we could take that off the list. But um, yeah, like honestly, like if I had to put it down to a single venue in the world, I think me and Adam, actually the drummer, both agree that we'd love to do like Red Rocks would be really, really cool. Um, but but actually, in terms of um, in terms of for me, it's like I said earlier, it's just about progression. It's just it's just hoping that we grow year on year. And um, I think you can very quickly forget about like your core values as a band and as, as someone that genuinely not without getting too deep here, but no, no, you know, you, you're, you're doing a thing to pass on this little piece of you and this little bit of your kind of heartfelt writing. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, helping other people or, or touching other people's lives or, or something that they can dance to and something they can rock out to, whatever that might be. And, and I really couldn't give a shit if that was for 50 people or 50,000, frankly, but, um, and, that, and that's truthful. Like, I'm, I'm happy doing anything for a living. I just love this. Do you know what I mean? So it's, um, so I don't really care. Like I, I'm not, I'm not like, well, if I'm not playing, you know, if I'm not on the bloody headline set of whatever download by, you know, 2025, then we failed as a band. Like, I don't care. I just, I just hope that people still want to invite me on a podcast every now and then. That would be lovely. Um, and that I get that I that I there's an audience that's willing to listen to anything that I want to have a little sing on. Do you know what I mean? I, I genuinely mean that. And I think, and I think that it will probably inevitably grow because because we'll just get out to more people through through you know platforms like your own. And and if people come and have a listen and they like it, then great. And if they want to buy me a beer, then even better. <laughs> that's cool. We we vibe on that. We like we like that. Um, obviously, you've got the the amazing tour with Miles Kennedy coming up for folks who want to check the band out. Have you got anything planned yet, Tom, for for the new year? You playing? I think I've seen you on some of the Planet Rock festivals and different bits and bobs. Uh, yes, we do, um, and I can tell you about that right now. Um, <laughs> we're at Winter's End, which is a Planet Rock thing, Fantastic. Um, right up my street, as you can imagine, and. Yeah. Can't wait to do it. There's genuinely, there's a couple of bands on there that we, we're looking forward to playing with that day. We've played with Scarlet Rebels. Those guys are great. Um, and Phil Cameron and the Bastard Sons are headlining that day. You know, we're, we're kind of friendly with them too. And I, I'm really good friend with Dane. Florence Black, I know those boys quite yeah, well. Yeah, uh, Florence Black's new album's fucking great. Really yeah, I've, I've listened to it on Spotify. Yeah, it's, uh, it is great. And they're lovely lads. Yeah, solid man. And they like... They're, I've been to see them, so they're, they're far too heavy for me, right? Like going off the back of what I said earlier on, right? And but I tell them, and it's fine. I, I imagine they couldn't absolutely give a shit at all. But um, but it's nothing. Having said that, I've seen them probably three or four times live, and and I've gone out my way to do that because they just epitomise that kind of. I mean, they're much bigger than us, but like uh, that. This is not what I mean. But when they started out, they just and they don't. They haven't seen the lost. They haven't seen the lost it, which is amazing. That just kind of raw energy. That mm -hmm. kind of smashing out a couple of songs in my dad's garage, and now I get this. It's almost like watching their career progress. It's like you remember when you played. Um, guitar hero and you'd get like the plectrum deal and then you'd get to the bigger stage <laughs> and, and they're just fucking great like i love it and they're just full of energy 
like going to see them live is 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 really good. Apart from that, mate, we we actually have got a couple other things lined up. I genuinely don't know the dates because I'm terrible. Yeah, cool, but but the the end goal here is to get a little bit of a headline tour set up, which I think we're working on at the moment. So as soon as, as soon as we get anything like that, then invite me back and I'll bore you again. <laughs> it's been an absolute joy, man. We could we we'll try our best to come and see you boys out on the road because I think it'd be a real joy. Oh, please do. Yeah, we're we're about to you based. Uh, Nottingham, Nottingham Derby. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think what, what we're doing up and around that part. But I mean, I, there's obvious reasons why we'd miss that bit of the country out there. Soon. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but if we're anywhere near, come over. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. I'll buy you a beer all night. It'd be great. No, I appreciate it, brother. Top man. Um, now, uh, the last question that we'd like to finish on. Uh, if you could tour with one band from the past and one band from the present, who would they be? Oh, shit. I know everybody says this. <laughs> uh, one, does it have to be a band? Can it be a solo artist? Yeah, yeah, it could be like a, a solo artist. Oh, sweet. You could go like Bruce Springsteen. I mean, we've had that in the past. Uh, you know. You uh, could... Well, so my past, John Martin. Mm. Yeah, everybody's going, I don't know who that is. But, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, if you don't know who John Martin is, I'm, I'm excited and annoyed. Excited for you and annoyed that you get to um, hear him for the first time because he's incredible. But he's dead now after having one leg from alcoholism. But um, so maybe I'll skip that part of my career out. But um, other than that, he is incredible. And, I, and him and Danny Thompson on bass, you know, what a tour that would be. You wouldn't remember where you were. They were incredible. But anyway, um, from the from now, a uh, band that I love to tour with now. Ah. Uh, I don't listen to any music now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I tell you, what I'm going to go see next week in Bristol. Black Pumas. Black. Black. Don't know them either. No. Don't know no, them Black either. Pumas. Uh, yeah, American band. So just kind of like, um, kind of like a two piece that then have a full band behind them. They're in the O2 in Bristol. Um, they just supported the Stones out in in a couple on oh, a couple wow. of dates in, in in the states. They were nominated for Grammy. They big news in the states, I guess. But um, so there's them, and also probably my favourite band at the moment in terms of kind of newer up and coming bands, especially breaking the, the British scene, are the Teskey Brothers. You know the Teskey Brothers? No, no, not heard of them. Man. Name so rings a bell, but I couldn't I couldn't tell you. Yeah, so they're an Australian band and. I reckon pound for pound, Josh Teskey, the singer, is probably the greatest singer on the planet at the moment. Um, he, if you like Otis Redding, it's like seeing a, a born again white version of Otis Redding. The guy is incredible, but um, and they're a great band, you know. But but yeah, so I guess those guys. I I'm not really. No, no, it's good. It's probably the I most. Think if sophist- it was Bruce Springsteen, nobody give a shit that I was on the tour. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's it's probably the most sophisticated slash coolest answer we've ever had. Because normally we get obviously, obviously, Tom, we normally get Guns N' Roses, you know, Motley Crue, you know, because people just want a <laughs> fucking good knees up and some tit in the mouth. Whereas you've gone more sophisticated, you know, more cool. And I think we'll we'll learn some we'll learn some new bands, won't we? We'll check them out. I'm so sure. Got- I'm sure it'd be a knees up. I'm pretty sure John Martin, for what it's worth, there's a little doc on BBC on 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 BBC Two at knocking around, and he would give those guys a run for his money. I think he was shot a few times, stabbed a few times, <laughs> walked great. from his house in Glasgow to London when he was 16 to just see if he could make it in the music industry. Yeah, he was he was pretty rock and roll, but amazing. But yeah, but then he sang like an angel and sang folk music, so nobody really give a shit. I guess. <laughs> so we've got Cardinal Black, and then we've got we're going the Teskey Brothers. Yeah, Tesky Brothers, why not? And then we're going John Martin. And then John Martin, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty, it's a pretty good gig. It's a pretty it's good pretty, gig. Pretty yeah, cool put gig. a word in with the Tesky Brothers. When they're on tour, over will next. Maybe we can tour support. That would be an amazing support, Tesky Brothers. We'll do what we can. We will do, we'll use our powers and we'll, yes, we'll try you. and fix it together. It might be a bit more harder for John Martin, but we'll, we'll, we'll do yeah, what we Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dig him up. He'd still be great. <laughs> All right, nice one. Tom, thanks ever so much, man. Honestly, it's been an absolute joy. Really enjoyed My pleasure, it, brother. Um, for people who haven't already checked out Carnival, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, go and check out the most recent EP, and obviously they're on the road pretty soon with Miles Kennedy, which is going to be all right. Knees up, and then next year they're playing uh, the Planet Rock Weeders End, which will be awesome. Tom, again, thank you so much, man, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, my pleasure, guys. Thanks, thanks very much. Thanks for having me on. <laughs>